Hello, and welcome to an introduction to electric power quality. My name is Ben Stevens. I am a research assistant to Professor Surya Santoso at the University of Texas at Austin. This introductory lecture will cover the basic concepts and definitions of electric power quality and reliability, as well as some of the common causes, consequences, and actions for the mitigation of power quality problems in utility distribution systems. To conceptually understand what is meant by power quality, consider the situation pictured here. During a thunderstorm, a tree branch makes contact with line conductors, creating a short circuit path to ground through which fault current flows. The recloser, located upstream from the fault location, senses the high level of current and trips, isolating the fault from the transmission system. However, in the process of tripping, any customer loads downstream from the recloser will also be isolated, resulting in momentary service interruptions while the recloser is open. The recloser will attempt to reclose shortly after it trips and, if the fault has cleared, power will be restored to downstream customers. In this situation, the recloser was successful in minimizing the disturbance to customers due to the fault. Situations like this one will inevitably occur in any power system, and power systems are judged on how effectively they mitigate and recover from these types of disturbances. One metric for so judging the power quality of a system is through its reliability. Reliability refers to the probability that a system will perform as it is designed without failure over a given time period. In power systems, reliability can be quantified through a number of indices, such as the System Average Interruption Frequency Index, or SIFI, which measures the average number of service interruptions that occur per year, or the Average System Availability Index, or ASAI, which measures what proportion of the time in a given year the system is in a functioning state. ASAI values are often referred to by the number of nines present when this ratio is expressed decimally. For example, an ASAI score of 99.99% would be referred to as a reliability of four nines. Power quality can also be described by how well customer loads function as designed within the electrical environment provided by the power system. This relationship is a two-way street, meaning that not only is the utility provider expected to minimize electromagnetic disturbances that could cause malfunctions in the customer's loads, but the customer loads are also expected to not introduce unacceptable levels of disturbances into the power system. IEEE and IEC have each developed formal definitions of power quality, found in several published standards. IEEE, in standards 1100-2005 and 1159-2009, defines power quality as the concept of powering and grounding of electronic equipment in a manner that is suitable to the operation of the equipment and compatible with the premise wiring system and other connected equipment. IEC, in standard 61000-1-1, defines power quality as the ability of an equipment or system to function satisfactorily in its electromagnetic environment without introducing intolerable electromagnetic disturbances to anything in that environment. Ultimately, all power quality disturbances occur when the voltage waveform supplied to a load by the power system does not match the load's electrical requirements. Usually, loads demand an essentially perfect sinusoidal voltage waveform of a given amplitude and frequency. If the waveform supplied through the power system deviates from this expected waveform, the load will not function properly. Distortions of voltage waveforms are caused by irregular current waveforms passing through the system. Through Ohm's law, we know that the system's voltage will be impacted by the current flowing through the system impedance. When the current waveform passing through the system deviates significantly from what is expected, the voltage waveform will be similarly distorted. For example, in this simple distribution system, a customer load is served through a conducting line attached to a utility bus at which the voltage is a perfect sinusoid with magnitude Vs. The customer load draws a current given by I1 times sine of omega 1t. In other words, the current drawn by the load is a perfect sinusoid. This current, as it flows across the impedance of the line, will cause a voltage drop across the line. Assuming that omega 1 is the fundamental frequency of the power system, and assuming that the line resistance is much less than the line reactance, generally a safe assumption, the voltage waveform at the load will have a slightly lower magnitude than at the utility bus, but will remain relatively undistorted. If, however, the current drawn by the load is not a perfect sinusoid, power quality problems may arise. Here, the current drawn by the load contains harmonic components, resulting in a distorted current waveform that deviates from a perfect sinusoid. Each harmonic component of the current can be expressed as a sinusoid, each having a different frequency, in this case an odd multiple of the fundamental frequency. 
Each current sinusoid will interact with the line impedance, each causing its own voltage drop at its given frequency. Therefore, the cumulative voltage drop, and thus the resulting load voltage, will also have harmonic components. If these harmonic components are large enough, the load voltage may become significantly distorted from the perfect sinusoid present at the utility bus, causing potential power quality problems for any downstream customers. Power systems are divided into three sections. Generation units are connected to the transmission system, the highest level of a power system. Transmission systems operate at very high voltages, traverse long distances, and are designed as a mesh, often with many redundant interconnections between two points. Subtransmission systems operate at medium voltages and sometimes directly serve large industrial loads, but typically feed distribution systems. Distribution systems operate at low voltages, serve most customer loads, and are usually designed in a radial configuration. When exploring power quality problems, we will focus on distribution systems, mostly ignoring transmission and subtransmission systems. This is because power quality problems are more common at the distribution level, and their effects are more pronounced due to larger upstream impedances, the presence of more equipment and customers, and the radial nature of distribution systems. Power quality problems can be mitigated in several ways. Filters or load requirements can be used to block harmonic currents from entering the system. Coordinated protective systems can be designed to ensure rapid interruption and clearing of short circuits. Protective devices can be installed to prevent lightning currents from entering the system. Or, line impedances can be reduced in order to minimize the voltage drops caused by these irregular currents. Utilities have a large financial incentive to take steps to mitigate power quality issues. In 2004, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab estimated that power interruptions cost American businesses and customers $79 billion per year in lost productivity, data, and resources. Two-thirds of these losses were caused by interruptions lasting less than three seconds. In 2001, EPRI and CEIDS estimated that power quality problems caused the loss of $119 to $188 billion per year. Of these losses, 104 to 164 billion dollars were the result of service interruptions, while 15 to 24 billion dollars were the result of other power quality disturbances such as harmonics, voltage sags, and transient phenomena. GRID 2030 is a proposal that seeks, in part, to reduce the impacts of power quality problems on the North American electric grid. Concepts such as renewable distributed power generation, automated communication between protective devices to facilitate better coordination, and intelligent power allocation all factor into this vision of a clean, reliable, and affordable power system. The GRID 2030 vision encompasses a large number of ambitious goals, but the most relevant goal to power quality comes in 2020, by which time it is hoped that automatic correction responses will be able to perfectly mitigate any disturbances in customer voltage magnitudes, frequencies, or power factors.